Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ward, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord dash oracle.com that's odd dash oracle.com tim odd what's going on brother well yeah thanks for having me on again um i sent you over four charts I assume you got them i do and i have the first one up all right uh this is uh the monthly chart and it's the um spx and i thought we'd get back to that the previous high which was back in january of 2022 up around that 4800 area but actually, there's a sideways consolidation, uh, February, March, and April there. Uh, and I got a little uh, circled number there, 467.37.30. That's the high back in March. So the market basically had a kind of a sideways trading range there. Uh, and I think that's probably going to be resistance. And oh. we're approaching that level. We haven't hit it yet. I thought we may hit it. Um you know, short term, because I'm thinking we're going to start a consolidation here any 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 day now. Okay. You know, maybe it started, but uh, I thought we might get to that 467.37.30 area before that consolidation starts. And, and it still may. I just don't know for sure. But if you look at the bottom window, which is the XPX VIX ratio. Yes. And and that's a, this is on a monthly time frame, uh, and the month is basically only you know, lower half over right but if that stays down there and the s p's hold up around where we are right now then that's that's a pretty big divergence on a monthly time frame so anyhow what i'm trying to say is you got a lot of cross currents here also want to say uh i have the bollinger bands here on this monthly chart yes and if you notice the bollinger bands uh is a uh, pretty close to where the january 2022 happened uh, up right around that 4,800 area. Okay. So my, my point is, if we do get to 4,800, you know, this year yet, even though I think we we'll may see a consolidation over the next couple of months, maybe three months, ultimately I think we do head, head back up and, and go back up and at least test the, the January highs up around that 4,800 area. And that's also where the Bollinger Bands are. And those two things may stop that rally. Um, okay. So... Anyhow, I'm kind of looking 4,800 by year end, and I, I I think we may kind of flip sideways, possibly create a big trading range. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's kind of a bigger view. Okay. So, so then, um, okay, let's see. Yeah. Should, should I go to the next chart? Yeah, just go to the next chart. So, this, so that's a monthly chart. So yep. that, that looks at the bigger picture. You know, nothing really is bearish about it. We got some resistance at 4,600 on the SPX and 4,800, which is basically the Bollinger Band and the January 2022 high. And that's basically what I wanted to say about that. So I don't, I don't think we're going to just keep on going. I think we're going to run into the resistance. And this is the next chart here. Uh, the second window down from the bottom, or from the top, rather, is the... Uh, VIX to VVIX ratio. Yes. And the VVIX is a VIX of the VIX. Right. And I've kind of screwed around with this thing quite a bit, and it actually does a pretty good job of, um, of you know, once you start nearing highs, it works pretty well. A lot of indicators don't work worth a darn uh, try to find a high, but this one finds highs uh, pretty well. And what I want to point out as, as uh, the the window right below the VIX, the VVIX ratio is the SPYs. Yes. And uh, I got a red line drawn there on the SPYs where the SPX has not hit its uh, February, March, April highs. The SPYs have. So the SPYs is actually into a resistance zone right now. Interesting. And hey, can you just say that again, Tim? Just say that again. That Just go over that part well, again, please. All right, uh, the SPX uh, has has not run into the February, March, April highs yet. It has not touched those highs. Right. But the SPYs uh, is running into the uh, I uh, see. Those, okay. Uh, February, March, uh, April highs. Right. Uh, so the S SPYs is actually into resistance zone, and the SPX is not quite hit there yet. But I what I'm trying to find here or look for is is if you notice the S. SPYs is pretty much uh, 
fairly straight up over the last couple of months, last three months or so. Yes. And the uh, VB, the VIX, the VIX ratio uh, still is pretty much uh, is making lower lows as the SPYs is making higher highs. So it's not really a divergence now, uh, at least, you know, maybe a real short-term one, but nothing of significance. Right. We noticed in the past, going into the 2022 high, the uh, uh, SPYs is making higher highs, and that ratio was making higher lows. And that was your warning that you're, you're heading into trouble. Right. Same now, thing happened back in the... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, that and, and, the, and the, is the... Is the VIX slash the ratio of the VIX of the VVIX, is that the two-day ratio? Is that what you're doing there, right? No, no, no two-day. No, this is different. Okay, out. okay, I got it. I yeah, got it. Okay. So, yeah, I do have a, you know, a five-day and actually... No, I'm with do you. I don't want to confuse frame, the audience. I got it. But I got I, it. Okay. Yeah, cool. what I'm trying to do is find out what the short term is. So I really took, you know, this is just raw material to really see if any short-term divergence is really showing up. Right. And uh, so that's the reason why I don't do any ratios in this one. I, I want to see any minor bounces going on here. Okay. And if you look at go, going back uh, to all those time frames, you know, this chart goes back to, what, 2017 or 18. Now, uh, all those significant highs, those ratios was going up as the SP was going up. And so far, that's not happening here. Right. And so, um, you know, I'm trying to find tick readings, the trend readings. That's not really saying much. You know, there's another uh, trend reading I got, a uh, 10-day trend reading. It gets down below 0 0.9. Usually, you get some consolidations. We're up around 10. You know, that's not helping. We're up around 101, I think, or 103. It's, it's, uh, tick readings, uh, that's the trend readings. The tick readings not saying much. Uh, you know, next uh, Wednesday, uh, they're going to 90% chance they're going to raise interest rates. Yes. Um, so maybe we rally into that time frame. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but cool. but I'm kind of, I'm not real bearish here. I think at worst we flip sideways. I don't think any top's going to be meaningful. Uh, yep. Probably when we get up to around the January 2022 highs, up around that uh, 4,800 on the SPX, I think. You could have a decent high up there, uh, but between now and then, I, you know, I, I think we'll flip sideways here probably into September, maybe October. I think actually August is going to be a down month. Okay. Uh, just to kind of just looking at some other stuff, but um, nothing real dangerous here. Is just you know, I don't know. I'm along the SPX. So, you know, I'm thinking about pulling that position off. I'm trying to find a good reason to do it. And at the moment, I don't see a real good reason to do it, other than, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. No, no, I'm with you. Yeah, I got it. I get it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stay, you stay like right there, Tim. Rate thing, but that should show up in some indicators that, you know, the market's going to take a rest, and I don't see it here. But, yeah, but I, hear, I hear the music, so I'll, I'll wait. Stay right there. Awesome, man. Uh, Tim Oli, Tom O'Brien, we appreciate your growl on the prowl. I want to stay right there, folks. We're coming right back. We have the Dow up 143, Nasdaq's down uh, 322, S&P's off uh, 39. We'll come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 146. You get the Nasdaq off 318. S&Ps are off 37. Uh, don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every day at ord-oracle.com. Okay, Tim, where would you like to go? Let's go to, uh, go to chart three. So I'm kind of done with uh, the S&Ps. Okay. Um, there we go. This, this chart goes... Yeah, it's uh, chart number three. The bottom window is the 50-day uh, uh, average of GDX up-down volume percent. Yes. And it goes back to 2010. And uh, it's a really good chart uh, to really uh, pick out kind of highs and lows. Uh, but every time it got down, uh, this is a bottom chart, uh, so it's up-down volume percent. Yes. And every time it got down below uh, minus 20 or lower, you were looking at a low, and every time it got above, uh, this is kind of a, more of a short-term type indicator. But you know, the signals last several months. Okay. But every time it got above uh, minus or plus twelve, is usually you're near a short-term high. So the market kind of just swings back and forth. Yes, and back especially in, the gold market, right? Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a gold market. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking for you know whatever's going on right now with GDX. I think it's going to continue. And it's going to continue until uh, the bot the. the Fifty-day average of the up-down volume advance, uh, advance decline, or up-down volume percent gets above or gets up close to plus twelve or higher. Okay, and we're we're coming in right now now about minus eight. So we got a long ways to go. Nice. And so I'm thinking this is multi-month. Uh, uh, so it it may take. Uh, I think we're going to go up until October. Okay. You know, in a nutshell. Yep. Then from there, don't know and and um, yeah, that'll be a nice I'm, run, I'm man. That, yeah, yeah, it's going to be. I think a nice rally. So this this is this is still early in the stage here. This signal, I think, uh, came in around mid June, uh, late June. I think it was. I have to go back and look. Yep. But, uh, this this signal is not very old, relatively speaking. So this rally, uh, even though we're down, uh, what? Two point six four percent right now. You know, you got to buy pullbacks, and uh, this is probably a pretty good time because eventually we're going to turn right back up again, if not next week, the week after. So this chart doesn't doesn't look at all the wiggles in a day. It looks at the bigger trends, which is sweet. Well, trends. you can see, you know, even here, I'll put this chart up for our listeners right now because this is there's no doubt. I mean, if we go to the Wyckoff method for a second, you know, this is as good as you can get. You're going into 44 million shares and you've only done 12 million today. <laughs> so yeah, you get a yeah. pullback, but you're pulling back into strength and a month and you know, like with no volume man. so yeah, I'm with right. you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, could it be down tomorrow? Maybe. Yeah. But hopefully oh. we are going to head higher. Right. And it's kind of hard to say how high I'm thinking we're going to go, you know, this is I may change this projection, but I, had, I did some other projections, uh, I don't know, a month ago or so. And I keep coming up with around 44 on GDX. And okay. that's a long ways up from here. Yeah. Um, don't know that number is going to be valid or not, but uh, I think it's definitely a, it's in the cards. And so this kind, of, this kind of takes a big chunk. Most of these signals, again, last several months, you know, some longer. Uh, but you're, you're talking a three, four month rally here. Yes. So, um, if we look on the next chart, um, this is, so I always like to look at the monthlies, the weeklies and down to the dailies. Right. I usually, I used to screw around with the hourlies. I don't want really to mess with those anymore. Okay. Um, cause if I'm a little bit off, you know, so be it. But long no, I'm as with the, you, the right. trend no. is going in my direction, right. you know, you, chances are you're going to be just fine. So th this is a weekly chart here, and uh, the, the bottom window is the uh, weekly uh, cumulative advanced decline percent for GDX, and the next window up is the cumulative GDX up-down volume percent. And I did a Bollinger Band on it, and every time, you know, if you're above the uh, mid-Bollinger Band on both indicators, it's a buy signal. If you're below it, it's a sell signal, and the uh, red is a the sell signal and the blue is a buy signal and it doesn't matter which one goes above it first either one okay so uh, the bottom one went up above the mid bollinger band first so that's the buy signal so last week it created the buy signal and the next chart up hasn't quite got above it but my my history suggests either one does it that's good enough for the buy or the sell i see okay so the, so this is on a buy signal as of last week. So it's a little bit lagging indicator, not compared to the previous one that gave a buy signal around mid-June. This just gave a buy signal last week. And you know what's so cool, uh, Tim and folks? Let's look at the, Watch this, folks, okay? I just put this up. I put a chart up here, Tim, of the Bollinger Band, right? Man, this is this is no doubt, man. I, I, and the Bollinger yeah, the Bollinger I put, Band on what on GDX or I did. I put the Bollinger Band on GDX. I went back six months, and you can see right what you're saying, man. It goes underneath that middle one, man. It trended all the way down. It jumps above it, trended all the way up. You had a little congestion yep. like in April. It screwed around a little, but then it went down again all the way until like five days ago, man. Right, and then bang. Yeah, right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Momentum. You know, it, it actually, Bollinger, or, uh, John Bollinger got it right, you know, and 
and uh, the market trends. And uh, yes. so if you look at the bigger trend, the weekly charts, you know, uh, what rule, though, the, the daily charts. So you really got to start looking at the bigger picture, see what's going on. So right. when this chart gave a bicycle last week, it's usually not a week, you know, a week or a few days bicycle. This is going to go you know, on for a while. So it kind of confirms the chart we just showed here previously, the chart number three. So yes. It yes. looks good. You know, we'll, we're going to keep going up, you know, probably to maybe top, you know, those two bottom indicators. We may get to the upper Bollinger Band on both of them. I don't know how high is high, but... Um, you know, the I, I like the, the last idea. A couple of years. Yeah, no, I, uh, I like the idea that you have you a got, couple got different the crap beat out of it. You know, uh, there's no much. doubt. There's no doubt. I like the yeah, idea how you have a couple different um, things you can look at to verify. You know, in, in this particular case, in the GDX, you can use the Bollinger Band to verify the last chart that we just did with the up down volume, because then. Then you get harmony, right? If you get both of them the same way, your probability of being right goes up pretty dramatically, man. Yeah, it goes up dramatically. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thinking we're, we're going to be on the radio again in October, and I'm thinking we're probably going to look at the high. So we'll be talking about that, and everybody will be screaming, you know, how great the gold market is. It's going to go on forever. <laughs> and, and I'll be getting a thousand calls. Forever, yeah, I know. It's not going to keep going up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, and so, you, you know what's well, amazing, Tim, too. is that... What happens is that when I get no gold calls, those are normally lows. And then, of course, when I get a whole bunch of gold calls, then we're right next to a high. That, that's just how life goes, I guess. You know what I mean? But, yeah, that's how life goes. When everybody's convinced it's going to go up, it's usually just the, yeah. the opposite. So Pretty amazing, that, man. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Well, listen, yeah. hey, can you just stay for one more segment? I want to ask you a, 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 a different question about this S&P for a second, all right? Just stay, stay, stay right, tight. I'll, I'll hold. Awesome. Stay right there, folks. Tim Ward, uh, Tom O'Brien will be coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now up 160. NASDAQ is down 293. S&Ps are off 34. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, are up 156. NASDAQ is down 285. S&Ps are off 32. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Wood. We're talking markets. Tim, let me ask you, on the S&P, right, the, I okay. don't think we went over it this week. The ratio that you use on the weekly between the VIX is, is that a, is that you use a weekly ratio also, right? Between the spy going higher and the VIX going higher, is that correct? Right. Yeah. But I actually, uh, 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 the one I think I showed you on your program is a five-week average. Yes. Um, three three weeks is pretty good, also. Okay. Um, I look at both, but five is, is just less messy, smooths out everything, and if you're presenting a chart to an audience, that one's a little sure. bit easier to read. Right. But yeah, it's a three. It's a uh, yeah, VBIX to SPX ratio, and um, that usually diverges at intermediate term highs, and that did diverge at the uh, uh, 2022 uh, high, and and actually all those highs before. So, so uh, this would get kind of interesting. Take, take longer. Would so, so uh, would using that? Do you get another signal at the close tomorrow night? Meaning, because it's a weekly. Right, it's on a weekly time frame, right? Yeah. yeah. You take it on the Friday's close, right? So you 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 wait and and usually if you ever look at tops, you know they they kind of jag around. They try to go up and they, they do. kind of fail, go back and forth, and and where bottoms, you know, a lot of times it's just straight down and straight back up. Yeah, no, and, they're nice uh, V's. I mean, so, listen, to, folks, we've seen tops take six months. I I, I know what I was just saying, man. There's no doubt. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Just a lot of it. They just take months and. And you don't know if it's a sideways consolidation for the halfway point of the move up or is actually building a top or a great big move down. Exactly. But that VIX ratio will give you that clue what's going on, plus volume studies and some other stuff. Sure. But the VIX is a pretty powerful tool. Tool I've kind of put it in my, my toolbox. I, I guess, like it. It really, it really helps um, uh, the trading, you know, what, what to do. As a matter of fact, when we were talking... But a couple of months ago, I was predicting the market was going to go higher. Yes. You know, the the reason why I was saying that, because of the uh, that ratio going, making higher highs. I'm, I'm with you. I get it. Trust me. The, like, you know, I mean, I'm, you know, I, I trade every day, so every day is a different day for me. But, 
you know, when you did come on, I says, okay, man, it was so hard to press that button going long, man. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it worked. That's but, the thing that's crazy, yeah. man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, right. okay, I, I get it. And, and if you're trading a longer time frame, folks, what's really cool about this signal, you know, like for investing, this is a nice tool for an investing too, Tim. I mean, more, even yeah. more so, right? Because it really, you know, picks out some nice highs and some nice, well, some nice highs. Let's put it that way. Yeah. 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 That, that ratio, matter of fact, uh, was outperforming to the upside, the SPX. Okay. And, and so the, the, that ratio was getting stronger where the SPX is kind of going sideways. Yeah. I'm thinking this thing's going to break up. You know, if it was bearish, it done the opposite. With the SP be going up and that ratio be going down. But, right. Now uh, this is the, the this the is good. Right. The, now, the reason. Now we're to a point where it's kind of meandering around here, you know, on that monthly chart I showed. I know. know. That, that ratio is has gone sideways where the SP has gone up. Yeah, so, that's why I was asking uh, you that question right now, because, you know, we got the the, the low in the in the actual VIX, okay, it goes back about three weeks, four weeks actually. The low in the last six days goes back about six days, and then, you know, today we got a little pop, of course, because you got a sell off. So that's why I was asking that question. I, I, I can't wait to see what that ratio is tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? So it's. So right. Well, if you go, if you go back to, you know, uh, uh, chapter, uh, chart one, today's yes. chart. Yep. Yeah, if you look at the bottom a window there, that's I have the it. SPX VIX ratio. Right. And I circled in blue there, showing you, you that. You did. You know the S. Uh, the S. Well, tomorrow's you know, the market's not. Clear. Tomorrow is the close, so that ratio has a chance to turn back up. But chances are it probably won't. But right now there's a divergence with the SPs making you know short-term new highs, and that VIX ratio is not making a new high. Okay. So that's what's kind of worrying me right now. Do, will we get to 4,600? You know? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm with, SPY I get it. has already, but the SPX has not. So right. does SPX need to? I don't know. Could. So, I mean, these are all probabilities. Oh, yeah. You know? No, no, no. So, I get it. I get it. No doubt. That's that's what's so cool about trading, man. No, it's a, we're in a probability business, man. There's no doubt about it. You know? Yeah. So, and, and when you take a look yeah, at... That, that, that uh, go ahead, you. Well, when you just go take ahead. a look at this run, I mean, the SPX in four months has gone from uh, 30, yeah, 3,800 to 45, 45, 45, yeah, 45, 78, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been a decent run, and you know, everybody's not still not really bullish here, so. Yeah, so I don't know. It's you know we got a lot of you know we may have a new administration going in in 2024, and if the market really doesn't know who that you know, what, what I found out about the market, if the market doesn't know, it's usually you know, what's going to go on. It's usually a bad sign for the market when it okay. knows what's going on, what to expect, even though it may not be good for the market. It, it still can be in a bull market. So I'm, I'm thinking next year could have some trouble because, you know, I don't know who's going to be president of, of 2024. Yep. Um, or uh, well, it'll be actually what January 2025, right? Sure. I guess when he gets well, you know, it's so but, you know. cool about what you just said there. That's kind of like in life. I I always tell people, man, hey, don't worry about telling me no. I just give me an answer, man. Do you know what I mean? I can I can deal with a no. Like if you just, you know what I'm saying? Like. You can't, it's very hard to deal with, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. If I can deal with, you know, either yes, oh, that's great. If, no, okay, that could be a bummer. But the bottom line is at least you know what's happening and move on, right? You know, so it makes right. a big difference. Yeah, right. Right. So, well, you know, a lot of these indicators will help to, help to give you a view of, of what, uh, you know, especially that VIX ratio, SPX VIX ratio type thing. Yeah. will help to give you a view of what to expect. Because uh, you know, I mean, even the VIX is actually pretty good, even picking out bottoms. Because you, you can me measure the acceleration of that VIX, which is you know that's, that's why reason uh, that's why I use an ROC rate of change. And when that VIX panics, this panic in the market is like the trend going to four or five. Right. Uh, so you can use it the same way, pick out bottoms. So the VIX is, has a lot more information uh, that I'm just starting to discover over the last couple of years. 
than uh, the trend does. Trend, you know, has a lot of panic uh, things to it. Well, also the, the VIX has so that's uh, so cool. Yeah, you know, uh, pa- panic things to it too. So I'm with you. Um, well, listen, man, yeah. it's yeah. always a pleasure. You have a great weekend, a safe weekend. Uh, and Tim's now, folks, he's on Tuesdays at uh, the three forty hour. And then, you know, that's that's one segment. And of course, on Thursdays, he's going to be on at least uh, two segments. Uh, that's that's the three twenty hour. Tim, you hey, listen, how, what's the weather like out there? Are you, you got is everything hot out there, too? No, it's, it's beautiful here. It's probably about, you know, low with high 70s, low 80s. No, oh, humidity, Mike, that's awesome, man. Wow. It's, it's, it's nice weather. So that's a beautiful right. thing. OK, man. Well, you have yeah. a great one. A safe one, Tim. Tuesday. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.